Hi everybody, my name is Normsk. I'm an artist, cartoonist and illustrator and I'm doing a series of interviews with Jonathan Marshall who is a world leading equestrian falconer and he's talking about his relationship and amazing bond with Amadeus, his horse and his falcons. Everything is uh, very much spontaneous, uh, filmed on location, so we actually hope that you really enjoy it. This particular interview, number six, takes place in our kitchen, and uh, it's after a hard day's work uh, where he's been preparing for his shows for this particular season. It is very much fly on the wall, and also, dare I say it, poo on the floor, as you will actually see. A tiled floor in a kitchen, I think, is very so important. So many things that, that I'd look... Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. That's good. That was well done. There we go. Yay. That's it. So you got the idea. Things <laughs> that, that I'd look... Right, just trying to be serious <laughs> now. What have we got here? Um, it's a magnum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That I'd look... Oh, sorry. <laughs> right, OK, cracking uh, on. This is Sonnet. Sonnet is three years old. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just three years old now. And she's a peregrine lana hybrid, so her father's a peregrine and mother's a lana. Uh, I'm using a felt tip pen here, so there's no margin for error. She's part of a family of four females. I've got four sisters, all the same parents, and um, she's a right scatterbrain. So she's quite sort of hyperactive. And if you imagine a class full of kids, and there's always one naughty mm. one who's always. I've got hiccups, that's why the cat oh, was right, doing right, that. Right. <laughs> Carry on. Well, she, she would be the naughty one. And, you know, I've often thought that sometimes the naughty one isn't necessarily naughty because they're stupid, yeah. isn't it? They're naughty because they're actually really bright. And that's what she is. I enjoy challenging myself like this when I'm drawing. Was she one of the ones that was flying? I didn't earlier. fly her to, tonight. She's the only one no. I didn't fly her, to Dolby Excuse me. But, yeah. um, and I've not spent time with her for, she went into an aviary 20 months ago before the pandemic. And Simple is best, but sometimes I do make a mistake and overdraw. No one's handled her. She's just been loose in an aviary, doing her own thing. So it's going to take a week or two for her to settle down. And how old is she again? Three. Three. Yeah. And she could live 15, 20 years old. Yeah. Okay. So she's still very young. Yeah. But she might have done 50 shows, perhaps maybe <laughs> 70 shows. Um, and has always been brilliant. But of course, like anything, they get better the older they get. So. I've also used a pencil. The last year and a bit, she hadn't done any work. Shame for her, because of course she missed out. We all missed out. So, but we so have, we've had a bit of wine in here tonight. <laughs> We're having an absolutely fabulous evening here. Why the peregrine falcon's feet, claws, whatever you call them, yellow? Well, um, every little part of her is actually has a purpose, the, a reason, and you have to look at them. Uh, what is the bird's main uh, reason for having a feature, uh, a, vis a visual feature? And it's normally connected to either uh, feeding itself or reproduction. So the bird's feet are a bright yellow color and they become more yellow in the breeding season. And this is a way of showing another bird that they're healthy. So we have an expression, you know, so-and-so is looking in the pink, meaning they're looking well. Well, a bird of prey advertises to another bird of prey its health and well-being by showing bright yellow feet, sear, which is on its beak, and the eye flashes. So that's number one. I know this is speeded up, but I am actually moving pretty fast and the levels of concentration are quite high. But if you look at the rest of the bird's colour, that also tells you a heck of a lot about it. Uh, many people say, well, why are the white or sort of light colour on the front and yet yeah, the dark on the back, grey on the back? Well, the reason for that is peregrines, generally speaking, live on cliffs. And when they're sitting on a cliff, they want to blend in so the Pet the prey, in other words, pigeons, which is what they made me uh, feed on, doesn't see them. So they face the cliff, they sit facing into the cliff with their back exposed and they blend into the background. Because she's the same colour as the slate, she's a slate grey. So if you look at a falcon sitting on the edge of a cliff, you can really 
They're only just about picking out if it's facing away from you. And then, of course, you'd say, well, why is it white on the front? And, of course, the answer is, when the bird is attacking its prey, it has to blend into the sky. And so in the air, this colour is the same colour as the sky because it's the same colour as the clouds. It would usually dive out of the clouds chasing a pigeon. So it's dark on the back to blend in with the cliff, pale on the front to blend in with the sky. But something that's really quite fascinating about this type of falcon is you can see that she's got the black lines under her eyes, which are called moustache marks. Why have they got that? Well, the answer is quite easy, really. If you look at any of the American footballers, uh, when they play, they often put black makeup on their cheekbones. And this is to stop the sun from reflecting off their cheeks into their eyes so they don't have to squint. They keep their eyes open because they're not getting the glare. And that's exactly why she's got them. So this falcon has got incredible eyesight, about 12 times better than yours and mine. So to enable her to be able to see and keep her eyes bright, wide open, they've got the black moustache marks to stop the sun from reflecting. So that's what that's about. Also, she's got three eyelids. I'm quite pleased with the likeness One here. at the top, one at the bottom, and one that goes across this way, sideways. It's called a nictating membrane. It's transparent, and that means that if she's flying at high speed and she gets a bit of dust or an insect in her eye when she's chasing a pigeon, she can clean her eyelid, eyeball with this nictating membrane without taking her eye off the prey. Also, if you look at her nostril, she's got a bone that sticks out of her nostril, a little coil, a little kind of bone. And that is to slow down the airflow because flying at 150, 200 miles an hour, if you ever put your head out of a train window, you know that it's very difficult to take in oxygen when the air's shooting past you. So that nose cone slows down the airflow and it enables her to breathe when she's flying at high speed, exactly where they get the idea in a jet engine to slow down the airflow. So every little part of her is, has a purpose. It's, it's designed by nature to enable her to be the absolute best. She's uh, actually perfect for her environment. You're a miracle of nature. And what's amazing about these birds is they can live in the middle of the desert of Australia. They can live in the Antarctic. They can live in Scotland. And the, the actual design of the bird varies hardly at all. Maybe the ones in Australia are a slightly different colour. Maybe the ones that live in the tundra have got slightly more feather. But essentially, the design hardly changes. And that tells you, first of all, they've been around for millions of years since dinosaurs. So they have got to be one of the most successful designs of all creatures. Yeah, I'm <laughs> Brilliant. I love it. Yeah, I've just... the night when, uh... My dad would do that. Yeah, Sarah Lou's just actually gone and said, what have you just said? Come on. If my dad was here and it was just his house, he's so into birds and so um, into birds of prey. <laughs> he would take it he as would, an honour. He would take, see that it as an honour, but also he would leave it there for weeks because <laughs> it would remind him that he actually had a peregrine yeah. falcon in his kitchen. We're just having a bit of chocolate here. So... Gone out with a chocolate mm -hmm. night when I got back uh, to the house, you know, I've been all on the motorway all day. Uh, Mum said to me, where are you, where are you going to put those birds tonight? I said, oh, I'll put them in the stable, don't worry. Of course, I didn't leave them in the stable because I was worried about foxes. I, hadn't, yeah. I didn't have a top stable door. So I sneaked them into the caravan, <laughs> okay, and I put them on, on the perch. Uh, I knew they'd be safe, went to sleep. The next morning, about eight o'clock, my mum's peering through the caravan window. Oh, oh bother. I didn't say anything. So when I went down for breakfast at about nine o'clock, she went, where did those birds stay last night? <laughs> and I knew. I went, uh, they were in the caravan. What did I tell you? I said, well, I know, but I was worried about it. I thought, oh, bloody hell. I suppose we've got bird crap all over that caravan now. I said, no, I've cleaned it all out. I thought, she said, you don't change, do you? She said, I remember having the very same argument with you when you were a little boy, and I did, I used to sneak my kestrel into my bedroom yeah. and it crapped everywhere. Yeah. And uh, she was telling me off then, and I'm still at age 53 being told off the same thing. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Cheers, everyone. Cheers.
<laughs> uh, that was great fun. Thanks very much, Jonathan. That was uh, very enjoyable and very informative. Anyway, there's a couple more kitchen chats coming along, so watch out for those. I've uh, put this on the end because a lot of people have actually asked me if I could show the whole drawing as a complete unit from start to finish. So here we go, and I hope you actually enjoy it. Um, it's actually only about 30 seconds long. Uh, we've got a couple of other kitchen chats to do. Um, there's one which is going to be to do with skydiving, and that's uh, going to be a little bit shorter. And also another one to do with childhood story. So that's to come. Incidentally, the skydiving one is to do where Jonathan jumps out of a plane, uh, God knows what height it is, and uh, then the peregrine falcon actually follows him uh, a few seconds later. And uh, of course, uh, I obviously asked him, why did you do it? Um, that's obvious, isn't it? Because it goes against everybody's natural instincts to jump out of an aeroplane at 17,000 feet or whatever it is. Anyway, I'd like to thank Jonathan for uh, partaking in this interview and uh, everybody for watching it and listening to it.